My name is Vinay Kumar. I am an uh, artist. Uh, I am a painter. And uh, I want to ask one question. That in your website, you give two reasons why Muhammad could not have copied from the Holy Bible or from the other pre-existing sources. So you gave answer that. You claim that there were no Arabic translations of the Bible during the time of Muhammad. But in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 6 and book number 60, number 478, it says that the gospel has already been translated into Arabic by uh, Waraka. And also second thing is, you said Muhammad was illiterate and therefore couldn't have read books such as the Holy Bible. But I'm not satisfied with that answer because it wasn't necessary for Muhammad to be illiterate in order to borrow stories from previous scriptures. Muhammad only needed to hear these stories orally for borrowing to take place. After hearing these stories, Muhammad uh, revised then and uh, he wrote the theological pre-assumptions and then tried to pass them off as revelation from God. The brother asked a very good question. He goes to the website, so I'm happy about that. Inshallah, he'll come to the truth. And I believe you're a Christian. Your name is Vinay Kumar. You're a Christian, I believe. And brother said, I give two reasons on my website. Not to have given several. We have picked up two. Some question. Because then you have to read in context. These are not the only two reasons. These are two of the many reasons I gave. And one of the reasons I gave that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ummi, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah An Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 48, that we have made the last Prophet as an Ummi so that the blabberers will not use that as a pretext. You have to agree that between illiterate and illiterate, it is more difficult for illiterate. You have to agree that. Do you agree or not? More difficult. More difficult. If a person who is literate, for him to copy is much more easier. He can hear also and read also. For a person who is illiterate, he can only hear. So at least you have to agree with me for sake of argument. It is difficult. Do you agree? Yes, got it. Mashallah. So these are points I'm mentioning many. This is not the only one point. Amongst the many points, this is one of them. All the others follow. Point number two, you mentioned. I said that no Arabic version of the Bible was present, and I agree with it yet. You quoted Sahih Bukhari, volume number six, that Varka, yes, he had knowledge about the gospel. Nowhere does it say that he translated. Brother, I challenge you. I challenge you. According to Christian sources, the first time, the first time the Bible was written, was in the 10th century. That means the Christian scholars don't know the homework. The first Arabic version of the Bible came much hundreds of years after Prophet Muhammad. Yes, Waraka being coming from the Bani Israel. He had knowledge of the scriptures and knew Arabic. Saying that he has translated it. He may have written some notes, but translated the full Bible, impossible. Nowhere does Sahih Bukhari say that Varka translated the full Bible. I challenge you. It may say that Varka had knowledge of the law and the gospel. May have written some notes. If, if, if. You know Salman Rajni's book? Salman Rajni's book also has verses of the Quran. I can't call it the Quran, but Salman Rajni wrote a book against the Quran. In that book, there are some verses of the Quran. That does not mean that is the Quran. There are other people like I. I read a book. I mentioned certain verses of the Quran in my book, Quran, Modern Science, Similarity, Islam, Hindu. That book is not the Quran. You cannot say Dr. Zakir Naik translated the Quran. Just because if you go on the website and see, Dr. Zakir Naik wrote a book, Quran, Modern Science, and I've quoted about 150 verses. You cannot say that. It is some. And furthermore, you said Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote down and corrected. OK, that's a very good point. Now. I have given a talk on Bible and Quran in the light of science. And I have proved there are so many scientific errors in the Bible. For example, in the book of Genesis, chapter number one itself, it says that the world was created in 624 days. It says the light of the moon is its own light. Genesis chapter number one, verse number 16 to 19. It says that the sun was created after the earth. Earth was created on third day, sun on the fourth day. I can go on and on. So do you mean to say Prophet Muhammad took this and changed it? The light of the moon 
is not its own light, it's a reflected light. Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 61, that the light of the moon is reflected light. Quran says the world was created in six ayam, six long periods. So you mean to say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam picked up all these things and corrected? Do you think you're the scientist? No, it was a revelation from God. So go for my full talk, just quoting part of my talk, and as though like you will say that I will, you hear my full talk. And then I said that even if I agree, he copied from the Bible for sake of argument and then corrected. Is it possible for a human being 1400 years back to correct all the scientific errors? Means what is wrong he corrected. It's impossible. Impossible. So this proved that it was not his work. It was the work of the creator, almighty God. Hope that answers the question. Now my question is just on fasting. I just want to know how somebody can control himself by fasting from morning up to in the evening 